Step 22, I can solve direct, joint, and inverse variation problems. Well, before we can solve these problems, we need to first understand a little bit about what, what exactly are these variation types of problems. Well, the first one we're going to talk about is direct and joint variation. As you can see from this graph, as the height increases from 0 to 9, the length increases of a particular object and it increases at a very steady linear rate. So this is an example of a direct variation. One variable is varying directly with the other variable. K is going to be called our constant of variation. Now, if you notice, it's very similar to slope intercept form that we learned a while back, y equals mx plus b. That's the equation of a line in slope intercept form. Here, m equals k. We just use k instead of m, but they both mean the same thing. It's the slope of the variation. And b equals zero because it's always going to start at zero. If a line does not go through the origin, it is not a direct variation function y varies directly as x. In other words, as x increases, y increases or decreases at a constant rate. Let's practice figuring out what a variable would be given some information. So the first thing we'll notice here is it says varies directly. And the direct variation equation is y equals K X. So we know that y varies directly as x. We also know that y is 15 when x is negative 5. So I can put these numbers into my equation. I put the 15 for y and I put the negative 5 for x. Now I can solve for k by getting k by itself, k is negative 3. Well, what does that mean? Remember, we want a specific equation for this problem. What we started with here, y equals kx, is too general. y equals negative 3x is a very specific line that has a slope of negative 3. Now, I can find y x equals 7. So I'm going to put a 7 in for x and I'm going to solve for y. So y equals 21, excuse me, negative 21 when x equals 7. Let's try another. r varies directly as t. r equals t. And r is negative 20 when t is 4. Dividing by 4, k equals negative 5. So my specific equation, r equals negative 5 t. Now I want to figure out what r equals when t is negative 6. So I'm going to put a negative 6 into my equation and solve. Another type of variation is called joint variation. This is when one quantity varies directly as the product of two or more other quantities. So we're going to just have a lot more variables involved here. Y varies jointly as x and z means we're going to use the equation y equals kxz. For example, suppose that y varies jointly as x and z. That's literally how I translate that first sentence. Next, we want to find y when x equals 2 and z equals, when x equals 9 and z equals 2. If 
y equals 20 when, x, when z equals 3 and x equals 5. So unlike the last example, we need the piece of the sentence first that has all three variables in it, x, y, and z. We need that one. If I start with what I've been given first, which comes right before this green sentence, I'm not going to have enough to solve for k. And we need to solve for k first. So I'm going to take this green information and plug it into my equation. y is 20, x is 5, z is 3, using parentheses, simplifying. 20 is 15k, dividing by 15, k is 4 thirds. So now I can write a specific joint variation problem relating x, y, and z. y is 4 thirds x, z. And finally, I can use this last bit of information here. I can find y when I have these two variables, when x is 9 and z is 2, plugging this into my equation and solving. 36, let's see, 24. Pause the video and try another one. Hopefully you found that when v equals 2 and t equals 8, r equals 28. Next we're going to talk about inverse variation. It's a different type of variation. It's when one quantity is increasing while the other quantity is decreasing. For example, the speed and time for a fixed distance vary inversely with each other, meaning that the faster you go, the less time it takes for you to get there. So the speed goes up, the time it takes you to arrive goes down. Here's a generic example. We're told that A varies inversely as B. So inversely, what that means, A instead of equaling KB is going to equal K over B. Inversely. And we also know that A equals 28 when B equals 2. So we can plug those in. A equals 28. B equals negative 2. And we can solve. 2. K equals negative 56, which means I can now write a specific inverse variation equation. Except instead of y, that's supposed to be the letter a. So I'm consistent with the problem. All right, and finally, we want to find a when b is negative 10. What that means is I'm going to put a negative 10 for B and solve. A is 5.6. Go ahead and pause the video and try this next example. Hopefully you found that X equals 8. Now one thing I want to point out you have to list your variables in the same order that you see them here to make sure you get the right answer. So in our given information, x varies, you could kind of think of that as the equals sign. And then inversely means we want to use division with k and y. Here's a real world example that involves inverse variation. The length of a violin string varies inversely as the frequency of its vibrations. So let's write what that means. The length 
varies inversely, meaning K is on top and the frequency is on the bottom. A violin string 10 inches long vibrates at a frequency of 512. So that's our given information. 10 inches is my length and my frequency is 512, so that's going on the bottom. Next I solve K equals 5120. So I create a specific equation. I'm going to use more variables this time. L for length, 5120 for K, because we just solved for K, and finally F for frequency. Find the frequency of an 8 inch violin string. So I'm going to put 8 for my length, 5120 over F. I'm going to multiply both sides by F. 8F is 5120, divide by 8, and that means that my frequency, let's see, that would be 5120, let's do the division, divide by 8, goes in 6 times, 640. And looking at our units, that would be cycles per second. The last example is a combined variation where we're going to have some direct variation as well as inverse variation. So this first sentence has a lot going on, but we're going to take it piece by piece. Suppose F varies, we write the equal sign, directly means K times G, directly is G, and it varies inversely as H. Then we are given some information that involves F, G, and H right here. So we put those numbers in so that we can find the constant of variation. So F is 6, G is 24, H is 2. Plugging that into my equation and simplifying K equals 1 half. So my new equation is F equals 1 half G over H. Now we could simplify that a little bit further. However, for the point of our problem here, it'll be fine to just leave it like that for now. Next, I'm going to put in F is 18, H is negative 3, Multiplying by negative 3, I get negative 54 equals 1 half G. Multiplying both sides by 2, negative 108 equals G. And finally, pause the video and try this last example, please. So we set up this equation, P equals KR divided by T, substituting the variables that we know gives us a constant variation of 40. We make our new master equation on the right, then sub in the additional information we have and use that to find that T equals negative 80.